Hey guys, EVP Man here, and it's been several weeks that I've been living with the Samsung Galaxy S8. Um, as a matter of fact, this weekend I was at a Cubs game and had many friends, at least four friends that were there present, each of them having an S8, and I noticed that there were things they didn't know about the camera. Uh, they were taking pictures, but really not taking advantage of all the capabilities and the very simple things that they can do to get better pictures. So today we're going to do a quick eight things you should do uh, to get the best uh, photo experience when using S8. So let's check out these tips. They're the ones I share with my friends and I'm sharing them with you. So the first tip is how do you start the camera quickly uh, given the fact that you don't have a home button? Well you can set this up so that when you press the power button twice it goes into camera mode. Let me show you how you do that. To find this feature you're gonna go into settings and after choosing settings you're gonna type in camera. Let's get a little closer so you can see that. This is a quick way to find it. And you're gonna go into quick launch camera and what you're going to do here is you're going to make sure, you notice how it kind of popped in here, you're going to make sure that this little area right here is on. That gives you the ability to press the power button twice to get into camera mode. So my next tip is all about selfies. So uh, to access the selfie uh, mode, all you would have to do is you just swipe up and you're going to go into selfie mode as you can see right here. Uh, the problem as you can see from this footage, it is very narrow so you're not getting a wide area. If you go into settings you'll notice that there's a picture size if I change picture size and I change it to 16.9 and I go back what you're gonna notice is now there's a wider area being covered so once again uh, that's a quick way where you could get a wider area now keep in mind that by doing that you do reduce somewhat the resolution but not substantially uh, from your camera now there's another way to get a wide angle selfie and let me show you that now to get that wide angle selfie, if you go here for a second, you'll notice that there's selfie and then there's wide selfie. Um, the other area just expands the image so you can see a lot more. But in this area, this is almost like a panorama shot. So what you could do is you can press the photo button, take the picture, and then you could pan to the left and to the right. And by doing this, you're going to capture everybody in the photo. Now the last tip about selfies is this little button right here. Um, flash. You know, if you're in a dark area, very few people uh, remember to turn on the flash. By turning on the flash, when you hit the selfie uh, photo option, uh, what will happen is the screen will turn white, it will illuminate the area that you're in, and then the photo will be taken. And you're going to get a better photo. So here's one of the photos we took at the game. Uh, this was a selfie. Uh, it was not the wide angle selfie that I showed you, but it was the 16-9 uh, um, you know, aspect ratio photo. And it included us completely as well as um, a larger portion of the background. Now these settings uh, can also be applied. The 16, uh, 16 uh, by 9 ratio can be included in photos. Now the photo quality, you could obviously zoom in and get some really nice quality out of this, but let me show you the difference with your camera. You're going to run into the same situation here. So notice this is a 4x3 and if I switch over this is a 16 by 9 So once again, same photo I try to keep my hand as still as I could. You'll notice how much I'm covering on the left side and the right side. And now look at here how much more you could be getting covered. All you have to do is change those settings. And again, here you see those settings uh, for the rear facing camera. This is the uh, version of the photo that had kind of the crop sides, uh, but it was still really crisp and clear. And then I switched it over to the 169 9.1 mega uh, bits or megabytes, and I got the wider shot. Now, uh, in the past, when you wanted to zoom in while taking a picture, you'd kind of do one of these things, right, and take the picture. Uh, now what you could do is, right here in this area, you can actually go up and go down, and then once you have the right magnification, uh, you take the photo. All you do is zoom it and click. So now let's talk about filters. Lots of filter options. So what you can do is by swiping over, you're going to see all these filter choices. And you may want to rearrange some filters that are your favorite. I really like black and white uh, photos. So you know when I tap on that, it changes to black and white. This one kind of brings in some color. You can see that, uh, the difference between these two. But they're not always going to be placed in the order of your preference. So all you have to do is press and hold on the filter. And then you can drag it and put it in the place that you want it to be. That makes it a lot easier so that when you're going to take a photo, um, you can quickly find the settings that you want. Now, you do also have the ability to add more. By clicking on that plus sign, you're going to go into the um, actual, uh, this is the Galaxy App Store and download more filters that you can apply. And I've uh, brought some in, so if I come back to that setting right there, you'll notice this memory one this is one that I brought in because it has the ability to uh, bring in some color but also bring in some black and white. So lots of filter choices. You don't have to stick with the ones that are there and you can also rearrange them. 
Now additional filter options are, that you can find is, you'll notice that we were up here for a second, you have the classic colors. If you go here, this is going to also change um, some of the colors and how the schema is. So, and the neat thing about it is you see that happening in real time. You do have the ability to add, um, in this case, effects. So you can add words, so cheers. Um, so you see this a lot on Instagram and on Facebook. So you'll be able to do that. You also can add, um, you know, faces. Uh, so, you know, once you're on the character, I don't know that it will do this. You see this a lot on Snapchat. Uh, but what you can do is using these as overlay um, on the person who you're taking the photo, and up to three people, you can do this. You can actually um, do these overlays. So you'll be able to have almost like a Snapchat type of experience. Now the last thing when it comes to filters I just wanted to show you is you can also get more filters just by hitting the plus sign. So here you have animal masks, Halloween masks, um, angel lady masks. You could, and there's also uh, going to be more and more being created now that this is a new feature uh, available with the S8 and S8 Plus. So experiment and then also download more if you like. Now another thing I wanted to show you is the um, shooting modes. And there are a lot of different shooting modes. I'm not going to go into Pro. Um, there's Panorama, which allows you to uh, shoot a Panorama shot. You can experiment with that. Uh, there's also their slow motion. There's Hyperlapse, Animated GIF, a food one that you can use. But I wanted to share one that gets a lot of hype, at least on Apple. And it's a shame because Samsung had this well before um, a lot of the smartphones started to implement it. Now, uh, just to be fair and objective, um, Apple has the best implementation when it comes to the selected focus capability. And what selected focus is going to do is it's going to give you the uh, image that's closest will be sharp and the background image is going to be blurry. So what you do is you just uh, go into focus of the item that you want to keep sharp, you tap on it, and you have to be steady and then you hit it. And what it will happen, you'll notice here on the side how it's doing this, um, this little thing. Uh, it's kind of creating that that blur. So now when you go in here, you notice he is in focus, but everything else is uh, blurred out. And when you tap, you can actually um, uh, switch between uh, far focus and also a, a pan focus. So you notice how it's changing. Um, so you'll be able to get that blur effect. Let me show you how it looks with photos, pictures, and some other things that I've taken. Now one other thing I just wanted to highlight with this photo is I did not use selected focus, but you'll notice how the background is blurred. And that was simply the fact that I was close enough to the uh, to the drink when I took the photo that the rest got blurred out. So you don't always need to use selected focus to get that bokeh effect in the background. Now one last thing I wanted to mention about selective focus is that selective focus um, effect is also available for selfies. So if you'd like to take a selfie picture and have the background blurred, you can do that as well. Now something else I wanted to add, uh, another feature, and this becomes very, very useful, especially when you're photographing kids. Uh, so I have nieces and nephews and you know if they're playing a game and I want to be able to track what they're doing and still keep them in focus, I enable this feature right here which is tracking autofocus. And the neat thing about this is that it's going to keep the subject that you tag in focus as you're taking pictures or as you're recording. So for example, I'll select this guy right here and notice as I'm moving him around, you'll notice that the focus window remains on this character. So imagine if you have your niece or nephew is twirling around, running around, and you're wanting to take them, your dog, your pet, this is going to allow you to keep them in focus at all times. And all you have to do is enable that feature. So those are my tips and tricks uh, getting the most out of your phone uh, with the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Again, not everything that the phone can do, but the things that I find um, explaining and teaching my friends and family how to use that makes their life so much better and richer when it comes to photography using a smartphone. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comment area below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.